Okay, in this video, we are going to continue to um, perfect and massage our web pages to make them look even more like we want them to look. All right, so at this point, I would say the first thing you should do before you go any further is to save your document, because I haven't saved my document in a while, because I can see up here with this asterisk, that means I haven't saved. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save or file save, and I'm going to save what I have so far. Just in case I need to come back to this state for some reason, something messed up or something didn't work, I can at least come back to here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how we could start previewing what we have so far, because now we actually have content in the document. We may want to start looking at it in the browser. We may want to start looking at it in live mode to sort of see what we have and to sort of get sort of get ourselves um, ready to start making it look like we want it to look. So over here in our um, upper area, in the upper left-hand area, we have our code split and design mode that we've been using. We've been using this split mode. We also have this live button here. If, if I click the live button, notice that it um, takes away those kind of frames that I had and it sort of shows me here what this page might look like in the browser. And um, maybe it's starting to look like I want it to look, but it has a long way to go. And there's some things I need to do. Still some things are not in the right position. I have to modify my uh, navigation bar. Um, my footer's not where it's supposed to be and so on. So um, I already know I need to make some modifications. I, if I turn off my live um, button, it takes me back to my work mode or my kind of like preview mode. You can also um, look at this in the browser if you pull down this little earth icon up at the top here and I'm using Chrome and I'm going to pull down to preview in Chrome. Notice that it will open up a page in Chrome and it'll pretty much look like it just looked in the live mode. So you have two ways to look at your page. You can either port it out to the browser or you can look at it in live mode. I would look at it in both. Okay, I'm going to close that and go back out here. All right, so let's begin to start manipulating some things on this page to make them look better. Okay, now looking back at my uh, finished product, now I just want to explain something. I went out and I actually purchased the font that um, I used to design this. And if you go back to my Photoshop document here, notice that I had, I'm going to turn off all my guides and turn off this wrapper turn off my slices and so on and so forth. Let me see so that we can kind of see this here. Turn off slices. Okay, so we can kind of see this. I have this typeface that I've been using and it's kind of part of my logo type. It's my identity and I want to continue with it even on my web pages. I don't want to be substituting that typeface for anything else. I want my web pages to look um, like the original design. So in order to do that, I actually had to, for my Dreamweaver pages, I had to go out and purchase this typeface in a web font format. So it cost me $55 to do that. So I, I went ahead and did that. I am not recommending you do that for your web pages. You're only just building pages for, for t uh, training purposes. So I'm actually doing this site for real. So um, that's why I went ahead and bought the type font. So I'm going to go ahead and just use what is available to me in Dreamweaver and just show you the difference between actually purchasing your own true typeface and um, using what Dreamweaver has available. So looking at what I have here, I see I have my name and my um, title, but it's not the size I want. It doesn't look like how I want it to look, and I want to do some um, modifications. In addition to some of the defaults that you set earlier on in some of the earlier videos where you set the margin and the typeface, we're going to also set the defaults for some HTML tags. And those tags that we're going to set the default for are down here in your properties. If you go down to your properties and pull the format button uh, up, you'll notice that you have six options for headers. Okay, and by default, those headers are assigned a certain size, and I traditionally do not like those sizes. So I'm going to set my own sizes for each one of these headers based on how I want my page layout to look. And I've kind of already done that. I want you to see what it's 
looks like finished. So if we go back over here to my CSS, you'll see here in this region right here, I've changed the header information to anytime I use header one, for instance, here is header one. Anytime I use header one, it's going to be 24 point. Anytime I use header two, it's going to be 14 point. Anytime I use header three, 12, and header four is going to be seven. So basically I'm setting up kind of like a style for all of the different text in my um, website. And based on that, I'm gonna use it to help me even further style the way this entire site looks. So coming back over here, I'm gonna do that. So what did I have? H1 is 24, 14, 12, and seven. So let's jump back over here. And again, we're gonna go into the page property area and we're going to make sure we're set to appearance CSS and we're going to select, oh wait, I'm sorry. We're going to go heading CSS. That's when we're gonna click, okay? Cause we're gonna adjust these headers. So here is each one of my headers and here is where I'm going to be able to say what size I want it. So I select header number one, I select 24. Make sure that you change this to 24 point here. Heading number two, I believe is 14 point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 14 point in here. I think uh, I had header number three was 12 point. And then I believe I had header number four as uh, seven point. So make sure you put point over here. And I also want the text color of these headers to change as well. I want everything to be gray in my site and I wanna use this 666. So I'm gonna change the color of all these to be 666. And I want to save this as a default. So once I apply this and say, okay, what's gonna happen over here is inside of your CSS, you're gonna notice that it, it adds um, oh, it's adding, you know, I don't like the way it actually adds another style. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to have ask you to do as well, is see how it, it added another style tag in here? Oh, no, it didn't. Actually, it, it uh, added it. Oh, I see what it did. It actually added the, um, there is a style tag already over here for your spry, and it added it below that. So if I come over here, what I'm looking at over here, I'm going to look, it's a little simpler, uh, it's a little simpler to read over here in my CSS palette. And I see that it has my headers here. I don't want them in a separate style tag. So I'm going to just basically grab them as a grouping and I'm going to move them up to this style sheet oh, right below uh, footer here is where I'm going to move them. Okay, so I'm going to just move them down below here. Okay. And then you could just get rid of this style tag. Okay, so now we've kind of made it a little neater over here. So I've got my spry uh, styles that we'll talk about in a little bit. And now I've got my header style. So each one of these headers, now if you look over here, are indeed right inside and in line with these styles. Okay, so I just basically moved them up. Instead of having two style tags, I, I combined two style tags into one. So now that we have set up the CSS for our H1, H2, H3, and H4, if we come over here into our document and we view that, let's go ahead and select, okay, um, let's go ahead and select this text. Okay, so why is it not letting me select some stuff? Oh, okay, all right, there we go, all right. So you select this first div, and I'm gonna select this first line of text, and come down here to HTML, and I'm gonna use an H1. Notice that when I do that, it changes that um, H1 to a, uh, a larger type font, which is kind of looking closer to what I want. Now I also wanna change this one to an H2, okay? Now notice when I did that, when I came in here and did an H1, and then when I came in here and did an H2, it doesn't differentiate the two. Well, unfortunately that's kind of like a bug and you are gonna have to do some coding and this is an example of when you would have to do it. So basically what you have to do is come back in here and select that first line and change it to H1. And then over here in the code, 
okay? So we're over here. Now, I know this code is getting kind of lengthy and it may not make too much sense to you, but what you're gonna have to do here is you're gonna have to take this H1, the close tag for that H1 and copy it, or um, yeah, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna put it right after my name, okay? So I have the open H1 and then my name and then the close H1. And then I have a, um, a, a return, which is what a BR stands for. BR stands for return. And then where it says design educator, I'm gonna go ahead and add a H2 here. So I'm gonna type in H2 and then I'm gonna close it. And then over here, I'm going to paste that close tag, but I'm gonna change it to a closed H2. Okay, and do a refresh. And now, notice what happens over here. I have a, um, I have a little extra space here. Oops. All right, so now I have, oops, I didn't see that. Okay, we, we're gonna fix this later. Okay, so let's just leave this. So now we've got uh, an H1 tag for our H1 and we have an H2 tag for H2. Okay, so that defines the size and we're using that uh, the, the size definition based on our CSS, okay? All right, the same over here. I'm gonna go ahead and modify uh, my footer. I'm gonna select the text and I'm going to change it to, I believe it was an H4. Yeah, there you go. And notice how it changes it to uh, seven point because we had seven points set up over here as our H4. I'm also going to modify this a little and I'm going to pull it out so it um, can make a, a one-liner and I'm going to put my cursor here let's see and I'm going to use um, something called a pipe in here and that is under I believe it's shift yeah it's right above the return key and right it's it's part of this uh, backward slash you get like this pipe. You can kind of see it here. It's just a, a dash. Now going over here in the code, okay, let's find this area in the code. So let's, let's look for our footer. And our footer is right here. Okay, notice that I put this pipe in here. But uh, no matter how much space I put in, in this, um, well actually that's enough right there. I, I put a little bit of space. I basically gave myself a little bit of space and now it's kind of um, one, a, a one liner, but I'm gonna kind of close this div in cause it's kind of a bit big. So like this, and I'll just kind of close that in like that. Okay. And then let's move this down here. Okay. Oh, come on. can kind of use the arrow keys to move that in place. Okay, so we're now starting to get closer. If we go into live mode, we can sort of see we're starting to get a little bit closer to how we want this to look. All right, um, let's go back into split, turn off the live mode. When you're in live mode, it doesn't let you manipulate things. Um, I believe over here uh, in this div here, I believe we can further manipulate this by um, going into the CSS. Again, this div over here is the, let's click off that. This div over here is the, uh, no, this is the banner. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to adjust, at least I'm gonna attempt to adjust. Sometimes CSS is, is, is kind of quirky. I am going to adjust the uh, spacing Okay, under block. So I'm going to select on the option block here, and that's going to help me to adjust the spacing between the words. So the word, not the words, the le letter spacing, the vertical alignment, let me see. Letter spacing, no, vertical alignment. No, this is not what I wanted. Let me see, hold on a second, let me, uh, find where this is at. I thought it was under type. Yeah, size, okay. line height, here it is. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I had a brain fart there. I totally forgot where this was. Okay, under type, 
you have this option called line height and I'm going to try and adjust it here. Let's see, I think I had it at 12. Yeah, I'm gonna change it to points. And if you hit apply, now notice how it is starting to, let me see, close that in a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit more like what I want. There, okay. Now you see how it's moving that in, line height of one. Um, let me see if I went with pixels. Let me back to it. Okay, no. We're going to stick with this. Apply. Okay. So now we're starting to kind of close that in a little bit. Uh, if you go into the live mode, you can sort of see how it's looking a little bit better. Uh, I'm not completely happy with that, but we're going to come back to that because I don't want to spend too much time. But you can kind of see how we're starting to tweak this. Okay. So let's go back here. Um, okay. So this... Uh, here I do want to actually I think I'm okay but I want to flush this over to the edge so in order to do that put ourselves back into split mode uh, we need to select on the G slice div and we need to go back into the pencil okay and let's go under I believe this time it is block yes it is block so we're going to adjust the uh, alignment within the block and the vertical alignment we want to go to okay text align to the right there we go okay so um, under text alignment we want to select right and notice how it shifted that entire um, graphic over so now it's kind of over to flush to the edge okay so it's starting to look a little more like I want it to look Okay, so let's play a little more here with the navigation. All right, now when you select Spry, at least when you select this blue region up here, you can sort of see that um, you have some options down here in the properties menu. And I do not want a second tier to this menu. All I really want is a single tier. So it, basically what I'm talking about here, and you will not be able to see any of your Spry working unless you put yourself in the live menu option, okay? And if I, I hover over this menu, this is the second tier. I don't want a second tier. And notice I have one on number three too, and I also have a third tier. I'm gonna remove all of this, okay? And just make it a one tiered menu. So let's go ahead and put, take off the live option. And over here under um, the, you make sure that you're clicked on the blue region and this properties menu comes up down here. And you're going to have to select and remove these. So in this, in this, this is the second tier. I'm going to select this and hit the minus sign, the minus sign, and the minus sign. And notice it's taken away the tiers here. Uh, select item number two. I don't have a tier there. Under item three, I have another tier. I'm going to remove that. Whoops. I actually have to go all the way out and um, remove this, and then remove that. Okay, and then on the fourth tier, I don't have any. Okay, so now I've cleaned up this menu to where I only just have one tier. But I only need, if I go back to my Photoshop document here, I only need three buttons. So I'm going to further enhance this by selecting this and removing it. So now I'm down to three buttons. But the buttons need to say what I need them to say. So let's select the first one. And if you want, you can go back to that text document. And you can copy what the first one needs to say, and you can paste that over here in this field. Select the second one, and go back over here. This is supposed to say portfolio. Copy that one, and paste that into here. And this third one, come over here and select contact, and we're going to paste that into here. Okay. All right. So now we're starting to get there. It's starting to look more like we want it to look. Let's put it in the live mode. Okay, see, now we've kind of got what we want to happen going on already. Sort of looking like, looking pretty good. Okay, and I believe I'm getting pretty close. Let me port this out to the browser and save it because it's always going to ask you to save it. And you can kind of see how 
we're pretty close to what we want. And uh, I had to substitute out that typeface, but that's okay. I still, I kind of like the way it looks and I'm getting there. So in essence, it's, it's a process. I mean, you have to go through s several steps to get to um, a final with this, but it's a, it's, a, it's a tweaking process. And you can sort of see how you have to take each div one at a time and you address the issues that you have with each div and you just systematically go through each one until eventually you end up having the page design that you want. So uh, this is the last video. So all I can basically say to you now is happy dream weavering and good luck with everything and uh, post any questions that you have in the uh, uh, week 10 problems and solutions and good luck and I'll talk to you next week.